Hey everybody, uh, it's been a while, but welcome back. I am gonna be talking about sleep today, and I'm sorry it's been so long, but here I am, here I am now, and with everything that's going on in the world right now, Penny's gonna try to get, don't, <laughs> he's like attacking my camera, no. Uh, with everything going on in the world right now, there's a lot more heightened anxiety. There's some more um, like depression type symptoms. There's a lot more uncertainty. And um, something that I am gifted at and good at is helping people get a better night's sleep. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm going to be going over positions for um, laying on your back and for sideline. For you tummy sleepers, that's gonna be another video because it's kind of advanced and slash try to retrain yourself, like do your best. And what's cool about some of the um, tips I'm gonna be going over today is if your body's in a more relaxed anatomical position, whereas most of us are like curled in a ball or something, that's not gonna help our body relax. So if you're in a more anatomically neutral position, you'll be more comfortable. It'll take some getting used to, but you're not gonna wanna necessarily go back to your old way of sleeping with these techniques. So I'm gonna be going over that. I'm gonna be going over a little bit mattress stuff, a little bit of pillow stuff, as well as just my two favorite essential oils to help um, with the aroma in the room. So whether you're a pro or not even sure about essential oils, we all know that uh, a scent, you know, cookies baking in the house or, grandma's perfume, different aromas can bring uh, a peaceful state of mind and bring reassurance subconsciously to the body. And that's our goal, especially right now with, um, with just the state of like twilight zone happening in the world. So um, that's my intro. Let's go. <laughs> uh, first things first is pillows. Oh. I imagine any mattress you guys have right now is what you're gonna have with, like you're not necessarily gonna be buying a new mattress. If for some reason you are, go with firm. Go with firmer, the most firm you can handle if you're doing like a sleep number bed. I've heard great reviews about that. Um, and then you're hopefully you can work up to be more and more firm because anything that's gonna have too much give to it is not supporting your bone structure and I've, I've had actually a lot of clients, for those of you who don't know, hi, uh, I've been a massage therapist for the last 14, 15 years, haven't been practicing the last year or two because I've been a stay-at-home mom, but I've had many clients blow a disc while sleeping on their soft mattress. So ideally, you can just start adding or add like a, a, a firm pillow topper or something, that pillow topper, like foam. You can buy the foam from stores like Camping Foam something to give you a little bit more support. Okay, so pillows. Uh, ideally, if you're a side sleeper, you're gonna want a pillow that's from your shoulder to your head, okay? So a decent size that's not gonna just collapse down. So here's my husband's, uh, we call it his lovey pillow, okay? And that's, you know, that's great, awesome. But it's down, okay? So, and down, while it's nice to hang on to, is not gonna support your head at all. You might fluff it up, then by the end of the night, you're just collapsed down or snoring, right? Snoring happens in this position. If you or your husband or someone you know is a snorer, this video is for you as well because I've helped a lot of people stop snoring, okay, with these positioning techniques, okay? Because um, a lot of times it's the this or the sleep apnea stuff, okay? I'm not a doctor. I am not a, oh, hi, Kathy. <laughs> um, oh, awesome, I've heard, I've heard good things about purple. Uh, I've not experienced it myself, so that's good to hear. Um, so yeah, so, oh, so, sorry. I was in the middle of my disclaimer. <laughs> I got distracted. Um, I'm not a doctor. I've, I've had good testimonies come back to me with this natural form of teaching. So take that at face value, okay? I'm not um, prescribing or um, treating any of your conditions. If you have questions, I can do my best to answer them. But again, I am not your doctor, <laughs> okay? So uh, if you have specific questions, take those to your doctor um, 
and have a dialogue or a physical therapist or whatever, you know, like phone calls are still working right now, which is awesome. Okay. So down, no, no down for the head. Okay. That's a firm, that's a, that's a hard no. <laughs> um, cotton is fine. Again, it's going to depend on your fluff. There's lots of different, like I've seen like stacking pillows now that you zip up in and you can wash and it's going to take some trial and error. Also, if you're switching anything, it's going to take a few weeks for your body to even adjust at least minimum, probably a couple days. Um, as anything new is just different, right? It's just different for your body to experience. Um, so if it doesn't work the one night, give it time. I know we're a very instant, <laughs> very instant, uh, gratification society and I'm guilty of it too. Let's just, let's just give some of these natural things a little bit of time. Give your body some grace, right? Give it, it's, it's working hard for you doing so many different things that we're not even aware of all the time. So give it some grace. Okay. So I have personally, it is a foam. It's a really dense foam, so it'll collapse some, but it holds its position really nicely. And our bed is not the most firm. So then my shoulders kind of sinking into the bed and then I feel I can get a somewhat neutral, you know, position. I'm not d tilted too much into my pillow. Um, and if you can, if you have somebody that lives with you, roommate or husband or something, go ahead, lay down, get comfortable and ask, say, is my head really far in or is it tilted up? Is it too thick? Uh, getting a objective opinion on that is going to help you know what you need to go towards, uh, a thinner or thicker pillow on that. Does that make sense? A neutral line down the center for your whole spine. Ideally we want it if your side line, a straight line. Okay. No funky angles, not your hips in and stuff. So we're going to get to the midline. If you tend to sag in the middle and you're like, you know, I'm going to be moving the, <laughs> the, uh, whatever it's called the camera here in a second, but Hey, so that's pillows, um, for back sleepers. If you guys want to do this with me while I'm doing this, that's awesome. Go ahead and get several different sizes of pillows, a thicker one. This is just one of my couch ones. Okay. And a thin one, uh, for back sleepers, you're going to be starting with minimum two pillows. Uh, when you're first getting started, you might be starting with upwards of four to five and that's okay. Don't let that, don't let that scare you. Okay. There is, there are reasons why we want a great positioning. And then as your body gets used to it and it gets lengthened correctly, you'll be able to pare down on the amount of pillows you have. Right. Okay. So pillows, uh, if you have particularly tight places, I like to roll in my upper back. Okay, I've done videos on this before. I'm going to do a quick, uh, recap of this. Switching this around here. So if you're a, a back sleeper or side sleeper, it's always really good to get some length in your thoracic area. Because a lot of times we hunch, that's where we hunch from. We're like this, right? Right back there. Okay, you're not gonna roll. This is funky, don't fall. <laughs> um, you're not gonna roll on your cervical spine, okay? And you are not going to roll on your lumbar spine, okay, your lower back. Those are both curves that already go this direction, okay? So with going that direction, you don't wanna push it further that way. It's going to disrupt things in the spine that's already there, the way it's supposed to be, okay? You do wanna help with that, it's called kyphosis hunch, okay? The hunch in the thoracic. I know this isn't the best angle, but we're doing it anyway. <laughs> okay, so this is helpful to feel because this is what we're going to be going for when we're sleeping. We want a elongated, not arched back, but an elongated thoracic spine. Okay. So you go slow. It's supposed to be about an inch um, a second, okay, when you're rolling. You go slow, you'll probably get some crunching, popping, and that's okay, 
because that's more of a lengthening um, adjustment, kind of self-adjustment thing. I am very pro-chiropractic uh, as long as they're trying to see you less. You know what I mean? They're trying to see you, get a feel for what's going on, and then they're gonna start with maybe once a week, then once every two weeks, they're trying to, you know what I mean? Like it's not just cookie cutter, I see you once a week for the rest of your life. That's not a proactive healing chiropractor in my opinion. So find somebody who's trying to actually help you. All right, so after you've felt that, and this is, a, this is the Trigger Point brand, and I do really like it. It's got some foam on it. This is the classic, I think it's called. We also just have normal uh, foam roller from Amazon, the high density. They also have a low density. So if that if that's too much for you, the I think it's a blue color, but a low density is great. Okay, um, the melt method. She has a great low density foam roller, and her technique is fabulous. So I'm pro the melt method too. If you want something to step by step take you through how to do some awesome foam rolling. Okay. So once your spine's kind of elongated, you're getting some some like feel for what it, it could feel like being a little bit longer. Okay, we're gonna be doing back first. Okay, so you're gonna be grabbing your <clears throat> pillow. So go ahead and get a pillow of decent size, okay? And move this around. All right. And when you lay down, this is too far back, so you want it to be hitting about mid shoulder blade, okay, mid scapula. You want it onto, yes, you want it below your shoulder. You're not just gonna go for your head, okay? So the theory behind this, uh, I have videos on my YouTube all about the spine and, and how to sit and how to lengthen and and the theory behind that, and I learned that down at the Balance Center in um, the Bay Area from Jean Couch, and she was amazing. But we want a nice accordion lengthening spine, okay, right? Like, we, wanna, we don't wanna arch it and stretch it in weird ways. We want to elongate it and rest at night, okay? So, um, yeah, if you're using it just on your head, it's too much of a kink. So especially if you're like sleeping funny and your bed's soft and then your head is just like this, that's not, <laughs> that's not good for your spine. You don't wanna just be sleeping like this. Um, we want a nice elongation throughout the whole length of the spine. Okay, so you're gonna get up on your sit bones ideally. So you're gonna roll your hips forward, okay? And then you're going to try to keep your sit bones down. So you're trying to have an anterior tilt, okay? As you lay down and lay back, okay? And now you're gonna have probably a hole underneath your, is this a good angle? I might put that down a little bit. Uh, you probably have a hole underneath your lower back, okay? We don't want that hole. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come up on your elbows, Okay, knees are still up, that's fine. And you're gonna traction your spine using your elbows, make sense? So my elbows are going that way and my body's going that way, all right? Tractioning, exaggerating for you <laughs> so you can really try to see it. Okay, you're trying to keep the hips down so you're tractioning, you should feel space in your lumbar spine, okay? You should feel space in the back of your lumbar spine. Um, your vertebrae should feel like they're kind of getting some nice traction and space in between them in a even manner. Okay, you're trying to not do anything funky. No cat cow, horrible for your spine. Stop doing cat cow, awful. Overworking, <laughs> overworking your spine. Um, so you're getting some traction and then once you got some traction, you just gently lay back, okay? Um, I think I am going to lower this. Any questions? Since we are doing this live, which is kind of fun, I'm going to lower this uh, down. Okay, so now that hopefully you're just resting down 
on your pillow. And it's gonna feel a little different, right? Like that feels a little different. Okay, so again, it's on your hips, you come down, in traction, and then you just slowly lay back using your abs. <laughs> okay, all right. So on the, below the shoulders there, okay? So now I'm like too far back. And so you're gonna grab one of your smaller pillows and you're just gonna help it go under your, your head. And now I've got a, almost a wedge, right? A wedge helping, I could even put this one lower, probably. So see how you kind of have this wedge Shoulders here, that's a lot more body weights coming down. And then this is helping your head to get some nice space so that you can ballerina, right? Tall head, traction. Okay, chin down. This is the snoring pillow. <laughs> this is the anti-snoring pillow right here. Okay, that, we want this. And then you would put your knees down. Now, a lot of people in this position, you can't flatten your knees. Your, your hip flexors aren't, um, I can barely do it. But then if you start feeling it, um, tug here, I'm way out of shape from having babies and stuff. Actually, my third. My third just threw everything <laughs> out the window. Use a pillow under your knees. That is totally fine. Um, you could even use your foam roller if you wanted to. It's hard in the bed, but. So something to where you're not gonna come back up and lose your integrity that you've just built with your spine, okay? Okay, so this is, this is super quick <laughs> back positioning to sleep at night, all right? Again, this is snoring pillow. You're trying to get a nice length almost like a string, an accordion, through the entire spine while you're sleeping, okay? Now, side lying. <sighs> Pants are falling down. Okay, um, side lying, side lying. Okay, so this one's more important to get a, a thicker pillow. Um, I think I'm gonna come back down actually again. I did practice this, but when you're actually filming versus just trying to figure out a system, <laughs> it looks a little different. Okay. Okay, so side line. So you pick your side. Okay, go ahead and get comfy. Now what most people do though, is we go like this, right? <laughs> we come forward and we're in a ball and our knees are like almost on our elbows. Does this look like it's actually that comfortable <laughs> when you really think about it? No, no, it's not. It's really not. So let's get cooking here. I'm gonna come this direction so you guys can see. <clears throat> so for this one, hi, we want both a horizontal straight line with your spine um, parallel to the floor, okay? So get somebody to help you make sure that your pillow is the right height. We want another line, okay, that is also parallel to the floor, but from a bird's eye view. So from your head through your spine and then your hip, so your greater trochanter, okay? That bone, if you do a hip cock, that you can feel right here, it's the top of your humerus on the lateral side, should be in line with your lateral malleolus, the bony protrusion on your ankle, okay? And your spine, okay? So head, middle of the ear, so ear, okay? Spine, greater trochanter, lateral malleolus is another line that we want when sleeping side lying. Um, I think I had another thing to say, but I forgot. Okay, so most of us, again, we're sleeping in a ball and, can't really see, but usually most of us are like 
you know, like this. <laughs> Pretend these are on the floor. <laughs> I really should get Adrian to help, but he's, he's working too. So what you want to do is you stick your hips back and then you bring your feet in line. It's gonna really open up the front there. I'll show you from the sideways view as well. Okay, so it's from here. Okay, no. Bring your legs down, hips, butt back, okay? Get that booty back, okay? Because you're in a C curve, right? Your spine's in a C curve, we don't want that. Get your booty back. And then put your ankles. They're pretty much one on top of the other, just slightly off. Like I put my bottom uh, heel into the top arch, but otherwise knees are on top of each other. And then the feet come back to line up with the whole spine, greater trochanter, okay, right there. Uh, lateral malleolus, okay, straight down. Again, pillows are not your enemy here. <laughs> pillows are your friend. A lot of people cannot do knees on top of each other for surgeries, for whatever reason. So totally, totally put a pillow between your knees. That is totally fine, okay? And some people have just the special like thigh pillow that's kind of hourglass shaped. Great, awesome. The goal here is to be comfortable, to be relaxed, all right? And honestly, honestly, the more relaxed you are to go to sleep, the less tossing and turning you're gonna have, okay? It'll take a little bit of adjustment, but you'll find yourself waking up in the same position, rested, not teeth clenched, not any of that, which I'm about to show you again how you remember our snore pillow that really helps with back, you know, position? Side lying position, teeth clenching is, is an awesome trick. So this will help with any of you teeth grinders, especially now, right? It's stressful. It's a stressful world we're in right now. And uh, I find myself wanting to clench more and really having to engage my knowledge of positioning so that I'm not causing my body more damage, <laughs> okay? All right, so now we've got butt back and we've got uh, ankles coming way behind us. And what that does immediately, you'll feel the openness here, but you'll also feel how your lower back, okay, your uh, quadratus lumborum, those muscles back there relax right away when you get that ankle, the whole legs where they're supposed to be. Okay, so come up you'll feel it's tight. And then you bring them back, they, they relax. And so many people have tight lower back muscles, right? And we have a lot of disc problems and all that stuff. So this will just calm all of that down, okay? So it brings way back. Okay, so now that that's relaxed, we tend to be in some sort of an arched, ribs are out, boobs are out, mid back is feeling a little crunched state now that we've corrected this. Now remember, just like with building a building, even though we're, we're horizontal right now, we have to start with a foundation. We have to start mid and lower stuff. So if you guys are saying stuff in the comments, I'll have to read that in a minute. So um, we have to correct the feet, we have to correct the hips first. Now we're gonna address that that pinchiness in that mid back, okay? You're gonna grab your pillow, okay? And do a slight crunch, okay? Ribs come down with that, all right? Try not to show you too much. <laughs> uh, and that should relieve it right away. So now it's like, <laughs> it's like you're a worm. You just keep like crunching this direction at night sometimes when you're first getting started. So you might have to like reposition your whole body because it's, it's such a, you're kind of spinning almost as you're trying to get it correct. But once you start getting it, your uh, movements will get smaller. At first they feel huge though. So I recognize that, stick with it. Okay, so now I did a little crunch. Okay, but then my face is still forward, my head is still forward. So clench your jaw. 
Easy to do, right? Now, create yourself a double chin. Come straight back. Okay. Elongate your head like you have a string from that crown of your head. Back top. Keep your ribs down, though. There's no arching of the spine. We corrected the spine. Keep it down. Ribs down. Double chin. I know, but you're sleeping. Nobody's watching you. <laughs> okay. And now you've elongated that back of the neck. Okay, the back of the spine back there. Now try to clench your jaw. A lot harder, huh? There we go. Teeth clenching. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, so now what do we do with this arm? It doesn't feel right. It doesn't, ah. Uh, there. Because we want this opened up. Okay, so thoracic outlet syndrome type stuff, right? Your th thoracic outlet, your nerves and stuff, they get really crunched like this. So if you have that syndrome, again, you can check with your PT and whatnot, but we really want it open. So you should be sleeping like this. Again, I recognize it's a really weird thing. So it's a big adjustment. So for a while, I got a big pillow and put it in front of me so that I could open up my my shoulder, but then still put my lower arm kind of on something. So it felt like I was, I was still like <laughs> protected and safe and cozy. <laughs> okay. And that's, that's great. Just be aware that you're not collapsing down on it throughout the night. Definitely if you're pregnant, that's where a lot of the discomfort will come from. A lot of people do this like straight back leg. I'm like, I'm sidelined. It's like, you're mostly on your baby though. So, <laughs> um, which the baby's fine. Like they can take that kind of pressure, but it's not the most comfortable for you. So then you toss and turn, you buy all these huge pillows or whatever, and you're just not comfortable. So, so um, this is how you want to be. Okay, throughout my part, throughout, well, I didn't know this until Archer and Adelaide, but Archer and Adelaide, I slept great. I had hardly any, um, excuse me, um, it called heartburn either because of the lengthening with the spine as soon as you because like you know when you have heartburn you kind of do this anyway like <clears throat> you're automatically doing that your body knows instinctively how to relieve itself of that pressure and um that burning sensation so let's see doing this right now okay oh, <laughs> that's awesome rachel um okay so that's i mean this is super basic basic overview for back and side lying. Um, if your teeth clench or even with your stress during the day, double chin, I know it's not flattering, but most people aren't really paying that much attention. And honestly, like all of the actors and all of the people we watch on the news and stuff, they, they have these classes. They tend to take um, either posture or balance type classes and we, we recognize it as very attractive, okay? We're our own worst critic when it comes to like our roles or whatnot. Because <laughs> um, most people, uh, when we see that hunched over, like really collapsed look, like on a movie or something, it, it seems weird. Yep, that's how we look most of the time because we don't, our eyes aren't open and aware of that. Okay. So aromas, I'm just going to give you guys my two favorites that I like. So uh, right now, most people having a hard time shutting off the brain, right? There's a lot of news we're watching. There's a lot of uncertainty. Our mind is just going through tons of different things all the time. So peace. Peace is my favorite for having trouble turning off the brain and needing to calm down and get grounded. It's got vetiver. That's that really earthy dirt <laughs> essential oil that we have. It's, it's wonderful, but it's just like, it's the best kind of dirt. You know what I mean? Like anybody garden, anybody like to be outside. When you go outside, a lot of times you smell trees, you smell flowers and whatnot, but you just smell the earth and it's, it's just very comforting. So, uh, vetiver, lavender, ylang ylang, frankincense, clary sage, marjoram, labadanum, and spearmint. Okay, so that's peace. Then my other favorite, uh, I tend to do this one in our room because my husband tends to not be able to shut down his brain very well. 
Okay, sorry, I'm like holding it right now. My other favorite is Serenity. Okay, and I like to add some wild orange to this. Uh, it's my favorite for the kids. So it's really calming. Uh, lavender, cedarwood, hoewood, ylang ylang, marjoram. A little bit of a um, pattern here, right? Roman chamomile, vetiver. Again, the other one has vetiver as the first ingredient, so it has the. It's a lot more earthy than this one's kind of herb, herbaceous and floral. Okay. Uh, vanilla. Okay, so some warmth there, and Hawaiian sandalwood. Yum. And I add the wild orange because wild orange is a very, well, it's uplifting. Most all the citrus are. It's a very mood stabilizing. So the lavender and these calming ones help you fall asleep. That wild orange just helps to kind of even out <laughs> the sleep. So if you find yourself waking up in the middle of the night, that wild orange helps you stay asleep. Hi, Bubba. Hi. Go to daddy. Uh... Yeah, so those are my two favorites. Uh, feel free to, as well as, um, what's it called? Putting in a diffuser. If you don't have a diffuser, find some sort of a spray bottle. Just spray it all over your pillows and whatnot um, before bed and just get the room smelling like it, okay? Uh, you can also put a few drops on a wool uh, dryer ball in the drying cycle okay it just helps to infuse some of that aroma into your sheets okay and i think that's all i have for you guys today uh please message me if you have questions uh, i'm always here for you again i'm not your doctor but i've just i found this to be an incredible incredible transformation in my sleep i've always been a good sleeper but it's just been even better as I continue to talk, I'm just going to set this down. Let's see. <laughs> um, and if you find yourself waking up in the middle of the night, do the positioning again. You're awake enough. Like, really, you are. A lot of people are like, I just, I, I, I tossed and turned in the middle of the night. I just, I woke up in a different position. When you moved in the middle of the night, you'll have to message me. and be like, Adrian, that's not true. You can't just decide how you're going to move when you turn in, in your sleep. <laughs> You're in a very light sleep. When you're tossing and turning, you're not in a deep sleep. You're not unaware, typically, unless you have some sort of condition. <laughs> you redo your positioning, okay? So legs, lower back, okay? Upper back, head. Okay, this. Okay, almost like, um, it's like your head is like an orb on an axis, right? This is what we want. Not this, we tend to sleep like this. That's not good. We want that in both positions, okay? Um, sorry, um, 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 I think that's it. I love you all so much and we're gonna get through this. We're gonna get through this together. Keep having that attitude of gratitude. Share this with people you love and I hope this was helpful. Okay, I'm gonna be putting it on my YouTube as well for uh, easier sharing too, okay? Thanks, love you guys, bye.